I want to I want to welcome you to the second session of our seven days of fasting and prayer. Remember that the Almighty God told me to be keeping this for him. I'm not doing it for myself. Never thought of doing this, but I was told to start doing this. So that's how this came about. So the first uh, the first seven days of the month, first week, first seven days, we dedicated to fast and pray um, in order to call into existence what God has for us for the month and for the rest of the year and for many years to come. I am going to ask my business partner um, to to, to read a portion of scriptures and um, I am going to deal with that passage. I'm going, I'm going to use that passage to do some work and then I'll go to other passages. Let's, let's go on that. Continue with uh, verse 8. No, start from verse number 1. Okay, I'm reading Joshua chapter 1, verse 1. Start. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of man. Stop there. Stop there. Please always watch where you stop because you are going to pick up exactly from there. Now, this is how Moses is addressed. He's not called a worker of miracles. He's not called a prophet. Moses is not called um, an apostle, a pastor, a shepherd. He's not a doctor, a professor. No, Moses is called a servant of the Lord. How many of you will be happy with that title. A servant of the Lord. Someone that is owned totally. Owned totally. When he is told what to do, he does it. When he is told when to stop, he stops. When he is told when to move forward, he moves forward. When he is told Forget about the people being angry with you. Forget about what they are saying. This is the way I, the Lord, want you to do things. That is what we call a servant. A servant does, although there is a place for you to listen to leaders that you've chosen or God has chosen for you, but primarily a servant leader is responsible and is duty bound to carry out the instructions and to move by the direction that the owner has given to him or her. So when the word servant is used, it's not a word for hypocrites. It's not a subservient kind of mentality of being a slave. Number one, complete ownership by the Most High God. Number two is a kind of leadership skill that we do not see anymore in the world. It's very rare. Number three, representation. If you are a servant of the Most High God, or God is in charge of your marriage, your business, or whatever you're doing on the earth, and you become his servant, it means that God is putting you on earth to represent him. You become an agent of heaven on the earth. That's the meaning of it. In fact, as long as this earth remains and you are in existence in that generation, it means that if somebody is looking for God, they should look at you. That's why you see Moses standing on equal footing with God. I'm saying this with special respect to the Lord Almighty. 
So Moses can address God, not just because, this is how Moses addressed God. He addressed God as equal. Why? Because he is God's servant. Therefore, he can also give suggestions to God as to how things are to be done on the earth. Moses was given God even ideas. That doesn't make God not to be God. Because many of us, we see God as a, somebody with a big stick waiting to hit your head when you make mistakes. That's how we see God. That's why in some religion, God is someone that is far away and you have to do a whole lot to be with him. That's not the God that I worship. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Jesus himself is not like that. Servanthood is a call to stand for God and to stand with him. To stand with Jesus. To stand with the Holy Ghost. There is no option here. It's not yea and nay. It's yea. Either you be a servant or you be nothing. There is no option when it comes to this kind of thing. Some people are asking God for the spirit of Elijah. I've never heard anybody asking for the spirit of Moses. And Moses performed more miracles than Elijah, but people are always asking for the spirit of Elijah. I don't know why. Or the, or the spirit of Boaz. Boaz anointing. Elijah's anointing. I've never heard anybody asking for Moses' anointing. Why do people not want Moses' anointing? In spite of the fact that Moses performed more miracles than anyone else. God did more miracles through Moses. Why do people not ask for Moses' anointing? Because he's fearful. He's powerful. But most of all because he's servant-oriented. He's task-oriented. Too much responsibility. Too much duty. Because when you ask for a Moses anointing, you're going to be sent to people who are hypersensitive, people who will throw you, throw you with stones. You are being asked to go and lead a people who are used to being slaves. They don't know what it means to be free. So when you do good things to them, they turn that good as, ah, we know why you are trying to do good to us. We know. You are trying to, you are trying to do good to us so that, so that you, you, you want to rule over us. We know why you are giving us money. We know why you are doing this. We know why you are doing that. That's how slip people who've been, who've never really had money, broke people think that way. That are in many ways, some, I'm not talking of poor people, I'm talking of broke people. There are two kinds of poor people. There are poor people who want to get away from poverty and there are poor people who want to remain in poverty. Those, you have to check which one is which for you to help. There are people who want you to give them money all the time. They do not want to do anything to get out and work for themselves. When God meets human beings, his desire is to take them out from being beggars, being broke, being without power into positions of power. Because whoever has power, whoever is in control, is running the show. There is no option here. Moses' anointing is an anointing for servanthood. To be a servant. And many people don't like to be servant. They love to be leaders. They love to be leaders. I don't really see much. I wasn't called to be a leader. I was called to be a ruler anyway. That's why where I am is my palace. And the next place that I'm moving to, I'm going to set up. There will be a part of it that I will set up a throne. I'm serious. I'm, I'm, I take this thing very serious because I'm a ruler. You have to know whether you are called to lead or to rule. Leaders come and go. Rulers come to stay. Leaders can, write, can be raised to them. Tomorrow they throw them out. Rulers come to stay. Rulers do everything. They consult. They do a lot of things for them. 
to be in power and to make their people happy. And those who follow them. Leaders just uses the people to get whatever they want. And they don't care. They lie to them. In fact, let me tell you, politics and power in our contemporary term in many countries could be defined as the art of lying to the people. If you are a good business, if you are a good salesman and a good liar, you can be in politics and you can be a leader. That's where we are in our contemporary world. Europe is being different to all those. I, I know that. Now let's carry on from what we are saying. There is no option if you want to follow God. The only option, if you want to be a leader, if you want to be a ruler, the only option for you is to be a servant. Because many people want to be pastors, apostles, prophets, uh, evangelists, healers, charity workers because there is money in it and because you are in charge of people. And many people, because they fell in the original job, then they come into this. Like many people who become police officers, they become police officers because they've already fell in, their, in the job that they are supposed to be doing. So they come into being police. That's why they are brutal to people. If you are born again and you've been filled with the Holy Ghost, you have no option, no other option except to walk in the, in the servant style of Jesus. Servanthood. Servanthood does not mean that somebody can just come and, and because that person is above you, they will come and tell you anything you just follow. But that's how some people in America, where I live, that's how they think. A lot of people think that way. Especially in politics and in business. That's why there is a new movement that has started. I'm going to say a lot about this new movement. Some of the, some of the, some of the global jobs like Apple and Google and, and Microsoft and a lot of the new, new companies that have taken over the world today are set up according to what God showed me in the new movement. Your boss come to you to ask you for idea. The whole movement, your boss come to ask you for ideas in order to fire you because you know too much and your salary is too high and you are looking for union and all of that. The new movement is not like that. The new movement, they want, let me tell you, some of the new companies that I'm seeing in America and around the world in Japan, Japan has really made it very nicely. Germany has made it very, these countries are far ahead. These corporations, Japan, Germany, uh, some, some of the European, a lot of the European countries anywhere, and, and some of the new ones that have come up in America, I've mentioned them, including some of the petrochemical industries that are rising up. They have been set up in the new movement mentality. I am, I am one of those prophets that God has chosen to spearhead the new movement culture in the world today. And I'm going to talk so much about this new movement and what it is about. See, some of the businesses in San Francisco and Sunnyvale, San, San Jose in America, your boss will even give you two days for you to go and relax and think. Come back. Come back to the job and tell us what what is the new thing you've discovered about how to do this better? That's the new kind of movement we are looking at. Your, your boss will sit down and say, challenge my idea. Give me, give me something better than this. And you sit down and break it down. But the old jobs that many of you work is not like that. If your degree is bigger than the one of your boss, they get you fired. If you speak your mind, they get you fired. The new movement is not like that. That's why many of you who want to follow the new movement with me, you're going to start your business. Because I cannot run a global business and a global ministry with tithe and offerings. I cannot. It's not getting me anywhere. And it's not getting you the blessing. 
I want people who can write me a hundred thousand dollar check. People who can write me a million dollar check. Why? Because through my ministry and through their willingness, because I can pray all I want to pray over you. I can fast and do power things over you, except you are willing to do something. Ladri is my business partner today. G is my business partner today. And Leona. These are my three business partners that I can tell you that I have. People who have sunk money into what I produce in the world today. Those are the people. I'm not sitting down here to tell you how much. There are people who have sunk money into producing CDs, DVDs, the marks and all of that. I didn't have any money to put into all this. I'm going to discuss more about this with Lee, Dorothy and the and those who, who wanna who wanna follow because my ministry is part of my limited liability company. I do not wanna go with the rest of the world who wanna hide on that ministry to 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 make big money. Let's 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 go business business. See, I'm straightforward. I want you to see what I'm telling you. I want people who, they will start their own business. I will fly down to your country to help see that business grow. I will walk and knock on doors to tell people about your business. Not just remain in the internet. That's why my cosmetics is coming up. Our, 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 our cosmetics and the women products are all coming out. And through the work of this girl. Ladri is the one spearheading this. Annie and G will be spearheading some apartment complex stuff. Those of you who want to follow me in business, servanthood business, come on, come on board. It will cost you between $5,000 to $10,000 for you to join my business. So that I make money, you make money. See, we, we allow the children of darkness to go into all these businesses and be making money and sharing it among themselves. What about the sons of the kingdom? That's the question here. Servant must look at their master and do what their master asks them to do. Our master Jesus has asked us to occupy till he returns. Occupy what? And we think that occupation means go and preach gospel. Go and tell people about Jesus. Go and heal the sick. After we finish healing them, casting out demons, what's the next thing? Occupy means occupy the business arena. Occupy the money arena. Occupy land. Be the owner of the houses. Why? Because that's where the happiness is. That's where the kingdom is built. The kingdom is built around money and material resources. The kingdom is built among people who are willing to build, not just to talk. Servants are builders. See how Moses built a nation. Those who want to follow you should follow. Those who do not let them, let them exit the door. <laughs> I'm looking for partners, partners, not just in ministry, partners in my own business, in our business. I want God to bless the work of your hand. So that you'll have so much to give to me as a high priest of God, standing in the order of Melchizedek in Christ Jesus Himself. I want to see you blessed. Let me tell you, I've told God that you should not allow this person to die. If you think that you will die and then just go to heaven and enjoy, you're wasting your time because I have told God to prolong your life on the earth. Because I want to enjoy, I want to enjoy what God has given to you also. I want to be a participant in the enjoyment. I want to, 
to come to the celebration. Many of you want to go to heaven to celebrate. Ah, 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 ah. I want my own share here first. You can't deny me that. You are not taking that money to heaven or that jet. I want to ride in your jet and in your car. I want to come to your house and enjoy the beauty of everywhere. In fact, I've told somebody to, to design how, how my bathroom is going to look like. My bathroom. Where I will take my bath and shower and all of that. Shower will be a different section. Toilet is different. Can't have toilet where I'm taking my bath. Forget it. Toilet is different. Shower section is different. Different, 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 different places. And where I take my lock, my luxury bath made for a king. And my family members. I mean, they have, they are separate. Each of them will have a garden with live plant that can withstand hot or cold. Steam. We want gardens. The bedrooms will be like a nest for a bird. Ladri, don't you like that? See, heaven begins here. Servants enjoy, let me tell you, what servants enjoy. Servants enjoy heaven on the earth. Amen. Before they go to heaven to enjoy the one in heaven. My parents are always looking for heaven to come. My mom used to sing to me. That's when Jesus will come back, Jesus will take her to heaven and will wipe away the tears from her eyes. I said, Mother, you wait for a long time. <laughs> I'm not waiting for that. You, you go. After all, your husband is there already. My father is there waiting for you. You guys can go there and do your thing. <laughs> yep. Every, every tithe and offering and all the good things he did, that's my earthly father did, and you have done, you failed to collect your reward. I'm the one. I, I'm not telling the other kids how to go and get it. I am the one who is going to get all the good things that my great, 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 great grandparents on both sides have done, all the good things they have done. I am the one, I have been given the key to open the treasure and get it all for myself. Yeah? Don't tell your siblings. I'm telling you to don't go about telling your siblings. Don't go about telling your siblings about this secret. If you don't know how to do it, call me, pay me. I will tell you how to unlock the treasure of all the good things that your father and mother, brother, sisters, all the people for generation in your, in your family tree and family line, all the good things they've done is accumulated for them in a treasure chest. And we will help you get the key to open. You alone, are, you are going there to get everything. Let me see. They will hate you even more because you are going to be much more richer than they are and they don't know the secret that you've gone and gotten everything that belonged to them too. Your uncle took everything. Your auntie took everything. Now you are going to get everything. You think that I'm going to tell my siblings about where the thing is? I'm not going to tell them. I'm going to get it. Woo! Seven, 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 seven. Servants are called for responsibility and servants are called for happiness and enjoyment. Do you want to enjoy? Do you want to be happy? You're going to become a servant. If you think being a bully and arrogant is the meaning of being a leader, you, then you are a big time joker. Jokers think that being arrogant and a bully, you know, you see some people who think they are leaders. They don't even know where they're leading themselves and they want to lead other people. They don't even know where they're heading. They don't have no knowledge, nothing in their head, and they want everybody to follow them. Follow you to where? To hell? Not me. I'm not a ship. I'm nobody's lamp.
except to Jesus, my good shepherd. That's the person that you are, Islam. But in this world, you are not a ma to anybody. No, you are nobody's good. You are nobody's good. That's why there is no option in this. No other option except to be a servant. And a servant with power. That's where we end this session. And you have to be. You have, let me tell you, there is no option for you. You must be a servant. And a servant is a business person, entrepreneur. Knows how to manage money. You are not a follow follow. Like a ye 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 ye. Only ye ye people follow follow. And when you start to follow follow, you become a waka waka. So from being a ye ye to follow follow to waka waka, uh uh, servants are not waka waka. It's about time that you know that there's no option in this. You can't go two ways, the two sides. Just wait and listen to the next thing that I'm going to tell you in the next session. You will know. This is serious. This is the Kai Mary. There is no other option except to be a servant with power, with excitement, with happiness, money.